Hi guys, it's Mrs. Sato back here. I've got the pan off the stove and I'm going to zoom in so you guys can see. You see how the butter's melted a little bit? It took it about five minutes. So let's take this thermometer and let's check and see what happens. Can you guys see that? Do you see the little blue mercury line rising? Ooh, it's almost up to 100. I gotta look here a little closer. There, it's almost up to 125. I think that's exactly perfect. We needed it to go between 115 and 120. So we're gonna take this mixture and we're gonna pour it into our um, our flour. And remember, I've only got two and a half cups of flour and I've got the yeast on top here. So we're going to pour this in here carefully. It doesn't splash all over. Okay, it's nice and warm so it's going to activate that yeast. And it might be a little bit of noise here. So that in the same way. Let's get this over just a little bit. I've got to turn the mixer on. I've got to plug it in first. That's cool. It smells really yummy. So it has to mix. Um, it says here, add to dry mixture in the mixing bowl. Heat on low speed with an electric mixture for a half a minute. Then scraping the sides of the bowl constantly. Heat three minutes at high speed. Then by hand, stir in enough of the remaining flour to make a moderately stiff dough. Turn onto a lightly floured surface and knead till smooth and elastic. So that's about eight to ten minutes. Then you have to shake your bread dough into a ball. Alright, I think that's probably more than um, more than a half a minute on low, so let's scrape our sides, because I said you had to scrape the sides. Can you see? I'm scraping off all the dough off the sides, and all of the yeast that got splattered up there. And I'm going to take that, and scoop it back in, and then we're going to turn this up on a faster speed, so it might get a little loud. Our measuring device is a ton. So do you see that? Uh, it says 814. So we're going to let it mix for another two minutes. So when it gets to 816, then I know it has been mixed long enough. So we've used this measuring device. This is a thermometer, and that measures temperature. Sometimes your doctor might use a thermometer if they're going to check your temperature if you're not feeling well. I use a thermometer to make candy and other things when I'm in the kitchen. I have a meat thermometer. This thermometer is what you stick in your turkey to make sure the turkey's done completely. So that's another measuring thermometer. This measuring device is a ruler, and a ruler is one foot, 12 inches. From the beginning to the end is 12 inches, that's one foot. So when you're measuring something kind of short, you can use a ruler. This measuring device allows you to measure a lot more than just one foot. This is called a tape measure. You can measure multiple feet with this cool tool. And my husband uses this a lot when he's building. Alright. So we've used our measuring cups. 
we've used our measuring spoons, we've used a measuring thermometer, um, I showed you the measuring uh, ruler, the measuring feet and inches, um, and then on the oven we have another thermometer, and that's really important that you pay attention to what temperature you're baking things at. So let's see our time here. 60, I think we got it. Let's shove this down. All right, now we have to start adding back those cups of flour. Before we only put in two and a half cups of flour, but it said that we need to have five and three quarters up to six and a half cups of flour. Or yeah, six and a fourth, I think. So that is a lot more flour we need to add. So we're gonna start adding flour. And we'll do it a cup at a time. So I'm gonna dig out a cup here. Here's a cup. So let's see, we had two and a fourth, and we added a whole cup. So how much will we have now? We had two and a fourth, just a little piece, and we added a whole cup. So we have three and a fourth. Okay, let's add another one. Okay, now we gotta mix that in here. We're up to, we had two, we added two more, four and a fourth, or four and a half, I'm sorry, four and a half cups of flour. So we need to go all the way up to five and three fourths. So we definitely need to add another whole cup. While that's mixing, I'm going to measure out another cup. Okay. Here's another cup. I'm going to slowly mix this in so I don't make too big of a mess. When you pour that flour in, it likes to go splattering every place. Man, it smells good. Did you see that big puff? Oh, it's splattering all over my counter. Okay, now we're going to have to switch out. Our mixing utensil. Right now I was using the regular mixing. The regular mixer but I have a special one that you're supposed to use when you're kneading bread, so we'll have to put on the kneading blade for our mixer here. So, scrape off all of your dough, and then swap out the blade, because we've done all the mixing, and now we have to start doing some of the kneading. So, kneading is kind of fun, and I just washed my hands. I should have showed you guys me washing my hands but um before you start before you start kneading or anything you have to make sure you wash your hands boys and girls because you're going to be touching everything all right so this is the kneading blade and that's what you need when you're working with bread dough okay so since we've stopped and i'm going to scrape the sides of my bowl with my spatula we still have to add in a whole nother cup of flour, so it's going to get really stiff here in a minute. Okay. All right. Put that down. Turn that on low. Okay. There it goes. Shooting flour everywhere. Now on, I'm going to have to use my hands. It's just getting too sticky. So let's see, we were up to five and a half cups of flour. And we still have a fourth cup more that we're supposed to add in here. We'll see if I can get it. It is tough to knead. It's very good for <laughs> building up some muscles in your hands, boys and girls. It's kind of fun to play with, actually. It's like big sticky play-doh. Okay. I think 
we're going to add some flour to our um, cutting board which is where we're going to mix this up and roll it into a ball on a cutting board. So we're going to move the recipe here. We've got everything, all the ingredients are in there. The only thing we still need to look at is the temperature to bake it at, and that's going to be a little while. So on the cutting board, oh, let's see, there's a cutting board down here. You have to put some flour out here on the cutting board so that you can knead your dough all right, so we're going to take the dough out of this big bowl and we're going to put it on the cutting board. And I think, um, I don't think we're going to be able to add any more flour except for in the on the cutting board when we're kneading it. It's got a lot of flour in it already. So hopefully you guys can see me kneading this dough. You just kind of squeeze it, push it down, and add some more flour. Squeeze it, push it down, and add some flour. All right, and then flip it over and when the texture gets just right, you're going to cover it up here with some saran wrap, stick it in a warm place, and let it double in size. It has to double in its size. This will make two loaves of bread. And they'll taste way better than anything you can buy in the store when you make it from scratch. Alright, I think we are... Well, actually... I'm going to knead it for about 10 minutes, but you guys don't need to watch me knead it all. And, I'll, and hopefully I can post a picture of the bread when it's done. The recipe says... You have to bake it for three... You have to bake it at 375 degrees for um, 45 minutes to an hour depending on your oven. But like I said, this dough is going to double in size and it's going to make two loaves of bread. So, anyhow, um, thanks for helping me with measuring. There will be a quiz afterwards. See you later, boys and girls. Bye!